Hi, yeah, so thank you, Jackie. In addition to working as Press and Media Officer for Com, I have fairly recently started working as Press and Media Officer for an organisation called Frontline 19. So Frontline 19, uh, just to give you a bit of background on who we are, what we do, is an organisation that was started by one person, which is Claire goodwood Fee. She obviously can't be here, she's not well, but she is a psychotherapist and founder and CEO. And what we do is we offer bank approximately sort of 10 to 13 sessions of counselling and psychotherapy. It's a frontline work on a cost-free basis. It's completely confidential. People can kind of go on our website and self-refer. So it's just between them and the counsellor. The way that our system operates is it's all free of charge. The counsellors very kindly don't make their time, but what we give them back is very high quality CPD, so training and development. And so the money that's donated goes towards that and running costs as well. So that's our model. And the way that it was started was that Claire is just an ordinary psychotherapist. She didn't run anything at the time, but obviously when COVID started, she, like a lot of people, wanted to give something back. I thought, well, what is it that I can give back? And anyway, she started such as a Facebook page for her age called Frontline 19. That's why we're called Frontline 19 because it started in the pandemic. And she sort of had the vision of maybe helping about 50 people, which, because she was an individual, she thought was still quite a lot to do, obviously. So she kind of created this page on Facebook. She sort of pressed out on it. And within the first week, this is what, 2020, within the first week, she had 750 people say, I need help which probably in hindsight none of us are surprised by. But if we fast forward now to 2024, we are supporting approximately 9,000 people every single week with free counselling and support. Um, we mainly support NHS workers, frontline workers, but we do help with a minority of um, fire service, police, not many armed, armed forces because they sort of have their own uh, support with them. But yeah, mainly NHS workers um, far and away, and we are sort of moving over to sort of do more of that. So the NHS, in terms of supporting our frontline health workers with their own kind of psychological support, and there is a huge need to do so. The practitioner health programme was set up, which is a confidential self-referral service for people, which is great, but it needs to be wider, it needs to encompass more, and trust kind of provision is fairly sporadic, so some trusts will deliver really great kind of um, mental health support areas and have well-being programs and stuff that actually contribute and make people better, but other trusts that will just really be dire, so it really is quite patchy. Uh, and with regards to the, the practitioner health program, only in April this year, um, the government in its infinite wisdom decided we're going to withdraw it for the secondary care staff, so that's hospital staff, we're not going to offer it, and we're going to take it away. Which at the moment, particularly, I'm sure we're all aware of the sort of NHS crisis sounds completely nonsensical, completely counterproductive, which it is, even on a financial basis, never mind anything else, never mind the human kind of cost and how bad that looks and bad that is anyway. And this is a service that saved a number of lives, like people from suicide. They were going to withdraw it. The only reason they didn't end up withdrawing it is because there was a mass outcry, both from medics that it helped, and from various charities, from people like us kind of on social media and things like that. And that's the only reason that they backtracked and said, oh, actually, okay, then we won't withdraw it. And Labour have said that they are committed to retaining that, so that's good. But charities like ours do need to exist because the PHP will not kind of encompass everybody. It's, it's not enough. But it is sad that charities like ours do have to exist. And our main goal is to make ourselves redundant, genuinely. It would be really, really good if we didn't have to exist and that there was really good provision throughout. I'm not going to talk for a lot longer because I know that I haven't got too much longer, but I just wanted to read you a couple of, and I'm, I'm not big on um, kind of convincing people with statistics, but I do think that it's worth reading just a couple in case people aren't aware. The level of trauma and mental health amongst frontline workers, particularly NHS, have never been higher. Like it's really, really bad at the moment. There is, I would say, an epidemic of mental illness amongst NHS frontline workers. And that is because of a perfect storm of quite a lot of things. Obviously, COVID massively impacted on people. There's an awful lot of PTSD around. And the issue is that there's been no time for staff to breathe in between COVID and what we're seeing now. There are 120,000 NHS vacancies. People barely have time to go for a wee a lot of the time, never mind take stock of their mental health. 
And so they've got straight from COVID is what they're seeing now. And they've not had a chance to have any sort of mental illness addressed, basically. They're just carrying on. And that is why we see that the, some latest statistics around there is that one in three NHS workers now suffer from poor mental health. That's a very high statistic. And very shockingly, one in four NHS workers have considered suicide. Let me just stop and think about that. It's really, really damning. And, and suicide generally is rising at an alarming rate amongst health workers. We lose about one health worker every three days to suicide. So, yeah. And, and going forward, in terms of how we're going to address this, hopefully the government we've got now, we can see the back of. But in terms of labour, I am concerned, you know, when they keep coming out with the fact that their big plan for the waiting list for NHS generally, the first thing they'll do is that for 40,000 new appointments every single week, and that is predominantly based on evenings and weekends. Yes, they're going to pay people the better, but pay is not everything. I'm thinking, well, they're not offering any additional workers, so what they're actually doing is asking the same pool of burnt-out workers who already have no time for themselves and their families, and they're already up here with everything mentally, to actually then work more evenings and more weekends. And I don't think anybody really, and certainly not enough, by any great any degree, people are speaking about the impact this has happened. The NHS providers came out with a survey just this week to say that the main reason for low productivity in the NHS is burnout. Because burnout is sky high. Now, Labour's plan is not going to do anything to help that, and it's actually going to make the situation worse. So I don't want to leave on a negative note. I'm just hoping that the more people are aware of organisations such as us that do things like we're frontline 19. If anybody needs support, you know any frontline work that needs support, you just go onto our website. There is a form that you can fill out. It's completely confidential. It's just our council and staff that see it, and they can assign them a worker. Um, thank you very much.